Hey, what's going on? It's your radio love, Deja Vu. You know we always have your favorite celebs stopping by. Today, we have one of our favorite restaurateurs in the <laughs> building, Ms. Pinky Cole. How are you? Pregnant. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Very pregnant. But you, you look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I feel amazing. I'm eight months pregnant, but Girl. you know. I'm and you out line. here doing this promo tour? I'm out here working, okay? That is the epitome <laughs> of a hustle her. Do you hear me? Yes, I am definitely a hustler. <laughs> I got six more weeks. Girl, she's counting. Down. Yes, every single day, Count but, but I feel good. So, but how have you been feeling, like, you know, with this pregnancy? I'm a professional baby maker. You know, I've been <laughs> pregnant since 2020. I, I read. Yeah, so I've been pregnant 2020, 21, 22, 23. So, at this point, I'm an expert. So Come I'm on a, now. You know, <laughs> so, the next I carry book, babies the next for a living. going to be a baby book. <laughs> oh, that's what I need. I need a baby line, a baby book, a baby YouTube, Listen, everything. We're going to talk all about that with this hustle thing. Right now, though, we're talking about, I hope you fail, yes. 10 hater state statements holding you back from getting everything you want. Yes. So clearly you have a lot of things that you want right now. Absolutely. At this point in life. But I want to, I like to take it back. Rewind. <laughs> Let's go back because your story is so fascinating to me. Um, mm -hmm. I saw that you were in college. You did your thing. You wanted to be an actress. Mm -hmm. You went to L.A. I did. What happened out there? Um, well, I went with a duffel bag, a suitcase, and two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, I was trying to be an actress. Since you were ready um, to grind for real, I was grinding. So I was doing background work. I was going to school just to get a refund check to pay my bills. Girl. And but God got a funny way of working, right? Because I got an opportunity to work in TV, and that wasn't even my passion. And I was so good at working in TV that it accelerated my career, where I went from show to show to show. It afforded me the opportunity to go to New York City here, right? Um, where I was working on a show and then got hired at the Maury Povich show. And that's when I opened up my first restaurant. Yeah, so talk to us about that one. I had the first restaurant, um, had a line down the block. I was selling jerk chicken, but I was vegan at the time. <laughs> don't ask me how. That didn't make sense. But look, though, um, if it was still good, it was still on, good. People, people loved it, I assume so, right? Because they came. Um, and then one day my restaurant caught on fire. I had a grease fire, lost everything. And I didn't know at the time that I was supposed to have fire insurance. I didn't have it. It wasn't a requirement. Mm. So I wasn't able to salvage any of the things that I lost. So my life went into a spiral real fast. Now, remember, I'm the girl. I was the queen of the school, the Delta girl, the pageant girl. I did everything. Right. And then I had this business. And then all of a sudden, my car got repoed. Mm. I got kicked out of my house. Right. I went flat, broke. My wages got garnished. Everything that you can think of happened to me. Wow. But I need needed it to happen because let me tell you what it did it really put me in a position to become an expert in the field so that when I opened up my new concept which the world now knows as slutty vegan yeah I'm like all right been there done that right like I know how to navigate through these hard times because I've been there before so that's really why I wrote this book right and of course having gone through that and then been able to pull yourself back up what was your immediate thing when you left when you said okay the restaurant's gone I got to go. You went back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That's where you went to school. What did you do when you were there? I mean, were you thinking of starting another restaurant? So right after the restaurant fell apart, I actually got a job working back in TV. So thank you for a plan B, right? We don't think how important a plan B is. Come but on. Like, that plan B was necessary for me because I got to work on a therapy show, helping other people get the therapy oh that they needed. Gosh. And I got the therapy for free. Right. So while I was there in LA, again, working for almost two years as a casting director, they called me and said pinky we want you to come back to atlanta and i'm like okay cool oh so wait so you you went to la came to new york went back to la yes oh i didn't know that yes. okay okay so like you see the pivot yes. right so when i went to atlanta i was in my two-bedroom apartment and i came up with this crazy idea called slutty vegan and i had no idea slutty vegan was gonna pop like how it did and when i tell you it popped like pop I mean, go to everybody weasel. has talked about yes. it okay so we knew i i read that you grew up as a vegetarian, is that true? So, more so vegetarian. So, my mother is Rastafarian. Uh -huh. So, my father did 22 years in prison, raised in a single-parent household. So, mm -hmm. my mother ate Ito food. I grew up eating beans and rice every day, okay? <laughs> um, and, you know, I learned just how to live more of a holistic lifestyle. Right. So, in uh, 2007, I decided to, like, eliminate all types of meat. So, um, you were ahead of the trend. I, w I was doing it when it wasn't cool. Right. See, when that's what I'm saying. Yeah, when people looked at me like, who are you and why are you eating? Why are you not 
not exactly. eat chicken, right? Meanwhile, and now I it's do a eat trend. Chicken, but I have, you know, I used to go vegan in January. <laughs> okay, that's and cool. And people be like, what? And, but that's but cool now, too. a lot of the same stuff that people are talking about, it's all trendy now, but you were really ahead of it. I was ahead of it. And what I realized is I was walking in my purpose before I even realized it. Come on. Because I was doing that for free. I wasn't making no money from cooking for my friends. I just wanted people to live better, think better, eat better. And then my purpose turned into the passion that turned into the money that turned into the profit that mm-hmm. all of these things it was just a beautiful thing so that, that's how the whole story goes though yeah. right that next chapter opens up all right so you started cooking for your friends mm-hmm. and you did a takeout version of this or a food truck of this right mm-hmm. it started at a share kitchen oh yes yeah mm-hmm. so i started the share kitchen had no idea that it was gonna pop like it did okay then um next thing i know i'm in a food truck i'm like i ain't never even eat from a food truck <laughs> And I had lines down a block, 500 people every single day pulling up on the east and the west side of Atlanta. Well, how did you know which way to go uh, to put the truck? Did you have a specific targeted or you... I still don't know which way to go. I just go. <laughs> I know that's okay. Right. That's the beautiful thing about life. I just go, and Come then on. whatever happens happens, and it happens exactly how it's supposed to happen. Right. Which is a part of what I talk about in the book, okay, right? Give like me some of your basic tenets in here. I hope he cheats on you. Oh. Yes. You know, you say, I got a clutch on my invisible pearls. So right. fortunately, I'm a married woman, uh-huh. but I've been cheated on before. Talk right? about and it. And I've gone through a lot of bad apples to find my prince. Um, and I needed to go through those bad relationships because it taught me the kind of love that I welcomed and I wanted and the kind of love that I would not tolerate. Mm-hmm. And although it was hard at the time, I'm like, you know what? This was a part of my story because had I never gone through this, I probably wouldn't have met my husband. Right. right. So that's one lesson in the book. So it's OK to go through a bad situation sometimes because you learn a lot from it. Um, I hope you go flat broke because you'll learn about financial literacy and I how to manage to, your no, money better. I got to gasp each time. You say, <laughs> and you say it to me with a straight face. Yes. I hope you go flat broke. It's the truth. Yes. It's, it's really re-engineering when people say bad things or when bad things happen. Like, I hope you lose your job so you realize that you were supposed to be an entrepreneur in the mm-hmm, first place. Mm-hmm. Right? Or that that you had a better opportunity waiting for you, but you had to get out your own way. Come on. Right? So That's like, my story. Okay. okay. <laughs> Don't say that out loud on the radio. <laughs> That's my story. Okay. Not but, here, but yes. <laughs> but but. The reality of it is, is when you can re-engineer a bad situation and shift your mindset, you realize that you will attract more positive things. Absolutely. And the minute that I started to do that, life started looking differently for me. Um, and I'm just putting real practical situations in this book that people can apply. Right. You know, sometimes you read a book, it's just like, okay, I can't really. No, you can apply this. Mm-hmm. And it's real and it'll bless your life. I love it. Yeah. All right. So back from the food truck to people finding out about you with your line down the mm-hmm. block. Were you advertising or did you just take advantage of social social media yeah. that's it that's like, the power of social I, I was I was doing social media before they tried to make you monetize off of it right now they like they're gonna shadow ban you but before <laughs> it was just like free game and the business has grown tremendously over the years it's been five years I got 13 locations 13 yeah I didn't see. Locations. I don't think I knew it was thirteen. Yep, thirteen. Working on fourteen. We just won the bid in the airport at Hartsville. I heard. Congratulations! Thank you. Thank yes. you. We got that a lot of so brand dope. partnerships. Um, and the brand has just done things that I would have never imagined. If you would have told me the little girl Pinky Cole that like you were going to build a multi million dollar business that will soon be a billion dollar brand, I I wouldn't laugh because I didn't believe it. But I'm like, show me. <laughs> but but now it's happening in the flesh, and I'm just so happy to be in the driver's seat of it. But you are showing us now when you started to expand you you got your from the food truck you got your first location how did you finance that did you have mentors and investors or was it just like hey this is the money that we put in because we do a hustle tip and we always want to try and tell our business owners this is how you do xyz so i actually was fortunate i had my dream job before i had my dream job if you know what i'm saying yes i was making five thousand dollars a week Come right through. so like i i was taking my money and like putting it in the business Mm -hmm. until I got fired, right? And then the money that I was making, I was making a lot of money, like every single day on a food truck. I'm making almost up to $20,000 every day. On one day from a food truck? Yes. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me call my cousin who can buy some stuff. Hold on. Every every single day. And this at the time, I was taking cash. I was dealing with so much money, so I was able to reinvest the money back in the business. I did eventually do a $25 million raise Mm -hmm. um, at Slutty Vegan. And obviously, you know, as you scale a business, in order to accelerate that growth. Absolutely. You got to raise money, right? Absolutely. But raising that money allowed me to grow even faster um, to be able to open up these locations and stand up this business. I mean, now my company is valued at $100 million. Come through. Five yeah. years, $100 million? Five years. 
Do you just sit back in awe sometimes? No, I need to. I work so hard. You see, I'm here and I'm pregnant. I know. <laughs> I know. I need to. You're running around. You're like, okay, I'm just going to sit for a minute. Yes, I, I need to. But, you know, God is so great. I, I knew, like, I expected this for my life. Yes. And I expected this because when I was a kid, I always said, that I'm going to make it. I'm going to be a star. I didn't know what I was going to be doing. I didn't know if I was going to sing, dance, act, whatever. But I knew that I was going to make an impact in the world. And it's just showing up in the form of burgers, pies, and fries. I love <laughs> it. Now, what's your favorite recipe that you guys have all of them <laughs> give me one the one night stand one night stand and, and it's what our is most that? popular burger really so it's the patty lettuce tomato onions and our special sauce on oh. a hawaiian bun it's so good you gotta oh. go to slutty vegan if you haven't i been. do i have to you yeah. you haven't been brooklyn brooklyn and harlem and Har- okay I, I can check the harlem one it's a little yes. closer can we get one in the city I'm coming. Come on now. I'm actually working on one right now. I just can't announce it yet. Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's coming very soon. Really? Yes. I'm so excited for you. Thank like, you. for real, this is amazing. And Thank you me. have, where are the other locations? I know Birmingham, Atlanta. Birmingham, Atlanta. Um, are you on the Dallas, West Coast? In New York, not yet. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you still have so many more places to be able to expand. I have, it's so much opportunity in the business, right, for, for us to be able to grow. That's why I said I'm just taking it one day at a time. Do you foresee, like, the frozen food meals? So we're already in Target stores. Excuse we, me? Yeah, we have our baking in stores. I got a dip in stores. I haven't um, seen We have this. our seasoning in stores. Yeah, in Target. Okay, we got to um, check for and that. And then frozen food is coming. I've been I've been playing with the idea, so. And I'm working you, on it. Where'd you come up with the name Slutty Vegan? Where did this come from? And all the names. Do you really want to know? I mean, <laughs> give me the backstory. What's story. the audience? Okay, so I was in my bedroom apartment and I don't smoke, right? Mm. So I had some medical marijuana and I'm like, oh, I'm a little loopy, <laughs> but in a good way. And I came up with the idea like that. I was just in the house and it just came to me like a light bulb. But I knew that this was the name and the concept because this was one that I didn't want to share with a lot of people. Mm. And I'm an idea machine. I give you 10 million ideas and what's up? You go go fly and be great. Yes. But this one I wanted to hold on to and that's when I knew it was the one. Wow. Yeah. And the rest, as they say, is history. The rest is herstory. Herstory. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you said you are a, quote, baby making machine. Yes, I am. When did you, you met your, your husband, like in 2020? 2020, I got pregnant uh, three months after we met. <laughs> Hey, listen, if it's been been busy, how did you guys meet? I mean, pandemic love. What was it about? It was a pandemic love. Um, Rest his soul, uh, George Floyd riots. Somebody bust the windows in his restaurant. He also has a restaurant chain. Um, And that's what I want to ask, too. How does that work, vegan and non-vegan in the restaurant? It actually, surprisingly, it works. But he has a concept called Big Dave's Cheesesteaks. And somebody bust the windows to his restaurant. So, you know, I thought he was cute or whatever. Uh, So I sent him a message and I asked him if he needed some help, um, you know, paying for the windows. Window. and he was just like no I'm good but I would you know I heard a lot about you I got lines down the block you got lines down the block we should you know connect on some community stuff and I'm like okay he's speaking my language come on now and then we connected at my favorite vegan restaurant um in Atlanta other than mine obviously and then we've been inseparable ever since that is so yeah. dope I need to see that in and movie. we just got married in June Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, that's my baby. I need the movie. I need the story. <laughs> it's coming. Who would play you? Who would you want to play you? Do you think about Notori. that? Natori. I can see it. Yes. I can see. Have Shout you talked to, to her? Me. That's my girl. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I, I tell her all the time. I'm like, when I do my movie, <laughs> you want to play me. Okay. I can definitely see it all up in here. Yeah. Yes. That That's is amazing. Girl. And this is not your first book. You it's had a, a recipe book as well. Yep. Book. It was called Eat Plants, Bitch. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> what do people say about the titles? But I like crazy. it because they're. You know what it is? They grab I like you. to do stuff that, that grabs you that like it's so racy and raunchy that just slaps you in the face. It's going to do two things. It's going to make you uncomfortable and then it's going to make you think. Mm. Right. And I like to pull back layers and make people think about stuff like I don't I just never want to be surface. So creating that name. Some people say like, oh, whoa, that's a little in your face. But like sometimes you need that like raw in your face person to tell you the truth and what it is. Absolutely. And that's what this is. I love it. I hope you fail. Pinky Cole. Pinky, before you get out of here. Give us a hustler's tip on something that if you if they're starting their businesses. What did you learn like from that first business, the one that burned down, into the successful slutty vegan? Oh, okay. So I got a good one. I have my five for five. Okay. Okay. These are five things that you need when you are starting a business. First you need an accountant, okay? Have an accountant so that they can protect your money and your assets so that you won't um, get your wages garnished. Yes. Okay. Have an attorney so that they can protect you in the business so people don't try to sue you. The attorney part. Okay. Okay. Yes. 
make sure you get an assistant, somebody that can like take the busy work off of you so that you can utilize your brain space to think and be able to grow your business. Right. Then you need somebody that is in the tech space. TikTok is like booming right now. And I don't know how to use TikTok. So I have to enlist people to help and show me the way so that I can expose my business to Gen Z is an audience that's not really tapped into my business yet. right? Right. And the last person that you need in your business is a really, really good designer. Right. People Mm. eat with their eyes. You want somebody that can like be a really good graphic designer. Make sure that your packaging is good, whether it's a restaurant, a clothing line, like your packaging and everything is what's going to draw people in. And if they like it, they'll take it seriously. They'll want to patronize it and they won't treat it like this is just a BS business that no, I'm not going to support it because they don't have their stuff together. Mm. That's my five for five. Listen, she just broke it all the way down. I love it. And I love the fact that you're so forthcoming. Thank you. you. You're giving the information you want people to succeed. And you also do philanthropic things with your pinky coal foundation i do talk to us about that so i started the pinky coal foundation in 2019 um and we have done so much i have given a whole class of graduating seniors from clark atlanta university llc's how amazing is that <laughs> i read that i was like yo yeah that is so dope what a gift did they Thank understand you. what you were bequeathing to them they did you know you know what i said i said as long as one of them become a multimillionaire through a business that they create, I know that like that hard work paid off. And even if they don't, it it will jump start the pathway to success. And it just felt so good to do that. Yes. Right. So I've done that. We paid the rents for local businesses. We paid debts wow. for college students. Wow. We've given out fruits and vegetables. We've partnered with the Department of Juvenile Justice. Um, we've given uh, life insurance for black men who make thirty thousand dollars or less. We've given out lights um, in partnership. Y'all done- we done a lot. I could go on and on. But but that to me, I'm yes. Caribbean, right? Mm-hmm. So my mother's Jamaican. I watched her help people growing up. Right. And when I was young, I didn't understand. I'm like, you were helping everybody. But I absorbed that and I feel like I'm becoming my mother. But it feels so good to utilize my resources to help people. I am just excited about everything that you're doing. And I I don't want you to fail. I want you to continue to be yeah. seen. But go cop the book. But fail I hope you is fail. finding aspiration in the losses. Come on. Yes. We got the whole acronym. I love you, <laughs> good acronym. Yes. Finding aspiration in the losses. Pinky, yes. thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Thank That's you how so we much. do it.